Well, hi, teachers. Welcome to week two of our Environmental Justice Global Learning Project. I'm going to run through again the PowerPoint for this coming week. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, there's a few things I need you to do while we're doing this, okay? Now, this week, uh, we added something new. We have a Pear Deck presentation. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to need to go to the add-ons up here, and you're going to need to, you're going to, need to get the add-on for Pear Deck. Now, I've already downloaded it. If you've already used it, you're familiar with this. Uh, but if you have not, you need to download the Pear Deck add-on for your presentation this week, okay? You can go to YouTube. Plenty of people out there showing you how to add on Pear Deck, right? Pear Deck. All right. So I got my add-on. Let it open up here. Now, I'm not going to do traditional present, all right? This is what you would normally do is up here. We're not doing that. We're going to go click on Start Lesson, okay? Now, for those of you who are new to Pear Deck, okay? Pear Deck is a virtual PowerPoint, except for the students can run it at their own pace. They can click through the slides themselves, or you can run it as an instructor. It's best to do this one here for our scenario, because this way you get to control which slides the kids are on, and you get to control the classroom discussion. So click on Instructor Pace Activity, please. Let it load. It's going to come to a screen where it's going to give you a code. Just like Google Classroom, the kids need to sign in, or Kahoot is the best way I can describe it. Uh, just like Kahoot, you got a website, you got a code, type it in. So ask all your kids to go to this website right now. I've actually already done that on my phone. All right, joinpd.com. Then have the students on their phones or on their computers or whatever they're using to watch this. Type in K Z Y M J B. Okay, you're probably going to have to post that in uh, your Google Classroom somehow or some way that you reach out to the kids, you're gonna have to let them know this code. It's gonna be different code for every teacher. Every time you open up this pair app, it's going to send you a new code. Every teacher's gonna get a different one. So you need to get a way to send this to your students that day, okay? So go ahead and click start class. So here's your lesson now. This is your new PowerPoint slideshow. This is your screen that you'll be working off of. Just click up or down to get to the next one. You'll notice that up top right corner, it's always giving you the, the updated code so you can find it anytime you need to. So clicking through it, we come to obviously our first slide, just to week two, that we know in the right place. Shauna went to every seventh and eighth grader and personally invited them to a global learning project Google Classroom page. Okay. Please remind them that they need to go and they need to activate that account just to join it for so. She sent the code out. If anybody's not in it, please make sure that they have done that, okay? Then you get your learning targets. Obviously, spend some time reading through it. Again, our big goal for this week is to get everybody logged onto the Literati app, all right, and join the eSums challenge. All right, I'll walk you through that at the very end. So, starting off with the movie, Life Cycle of a Plastic Bottle. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's got some science in it, but it moves right along. It's not that boring. It's, it's really good. It's not boring at all, okay? Then... Just a simple thing for you guys to talk about. Did you realize that the plastic bottles you drink are actually made from crude oil? Same stuff that diesel and gasoline and Vaseline, uh, kerosene, all those good things are made out of. Don't be a nurdle. Interesting, fun video about tiny pieces of plastic that are called nurdles. All right, you'll learn about them as you watch it. The next page, though, however, okay, has uh, a video reflection. We've got some questions here based on the video you just watched. Now, what are some ways you can reduce the impact of plastic in the environment? All right, they actually list some. Maybe you didn't memorize them. Down here, I have this option right here. You can't see it well because I have this screen in the way. Get out of the way. Move. It's the notes page, okay? We actually wrote down the answers for it. So what are some ways you can reduce the amount of plastic in the environment? All right, you can bury it. You can burn it. You can shred it. You can recycle it. All right, you can buy products without microplastics, or you can just switch to paper, okay, and glass products. So there's a few ways there, and we also give you all the answers for the next question too, all right? That way, just in case you didn't remember what's really going on, the students do not see that. So if you go down to notes, the students don't see that part, I believe, okay? Good. This is a picture of the challenge that one person took. He swam through the Great Garbage Patch. It's 300 miles long. Again, in the uh, notes section, we sent you a, we gave you the link 
uh, where to find this actual picture and the article that goes with it. But just you can talk about it real quick. This is a picture of part of the great garbage pass that's in the Pacific Ocean. And a guy actually swam all 300 miles through it. Pretty interesting. Pretty disgusting. All right. Here's a, uh, a slide, um, <clears throat> a graphic about the great garbage patch. Maybe just sit here for a minute and let the kids dwell on some of these facts. All right. Maybe simply read it out a little bit to them. You know, there's 8,000, I'm sorry, 80,000 tons of garbage. Um, you know, 100, uh, 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic. So maybe let the kids dwell on that for a minute. Uh, share with them how it's kind of like a, an iceberg. All right. What you see on the top is just a small sliver of actually what really exists. Okay. Then we actually have a video that goes into depth about what the Great Garbage Patch is made out of, where it's located, um, and all the information that's actually just about that one in the Pacific Ocean, the biggest one, and how the tidal currents bring all the plastic together in one spot and why it does that. It's pretty cool. Then we have a, a next one about the hard truth about plastic. Uh, this one goes into uh, what is the, the serious environmental issues that happen because of all this plastic that's washed up on shores. Then we have a question uh, based off this lesson. All right, what do you feel as students? So make sure your students are actually uh, doing this on their own screen. They have the opportunity to drag and click, all right, and put their answers in. You'll notice here that uh, there are some dots, yellow, green uh, dots. The students, what you can't see is right here, it's like a stop sign. It says red, yellow, green. They click those dots and they place them on the line here where they feel do you feel your plastic disposal prices need to change after this lesson okay <clears throat> 70 strongly agree so they might grab one and they might move it down to here okay if you go to no i'm doing it on my phone as a student real quick but if you go down to responses show responses there we go as a student this is what i just set up your students will put their dots on a number line and then you can have some time to talk about it okay you can also go back and hide your responses again to continue on with your lesson plan. But again, show responses down here will allow you to see everybody's work. Again, there's no names attached to it, um, but it's an interesting place for you guys to get some feedback from your students. Last question, this is an interesting one. Again, another Pear Deck, right, interactive question. If you can go back in time, would you try and prevent plastics from ever being discovered? Again, as a student, I'm doing it right now. Oh, yes, I would definitely go back and stop them from being discovered. Okay, I can go to show responses over here. And there you go. One student, myself, said that he would go back in time like Terminator and change the discovery of plastic from ever occurring. This would also be a good time for you to talk about what would be the implications if we got rid of plastics, if someone went back in time and knocked off the inventor of plastics, all right, or blew up his lab or something like that. What would the long-term implications be? What would our world look like today if plastics didn't exist? That might be an interesting discussion. Maybe you could have a little period of time right now where you have a little debate. Hey, half the class says they would, half the class said they wouldn't. Share some responses out. Why or why not would you do that? All right. Let the, let the kids have the opportunity to share some of their thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> we got some more discussion questions for you. All right. And then lastly. The challenge page. This is where it's going to take you a little bit of time. I actually want you teachers to do this before you teach your lesson. All right. So preferably like today all right, or tonight, please take your phone out and do this. All right. That way, when a student say, hey, what do I do? You already know what to do because you've been through it. Oh, I don't know. where. I don't know how to get into this. OK, well, I know how to get into this because I've done it. OK, so basically, I want you to join. The Literati app. This is the garbage litter app. All right, Sean and I created a challenge. It's called the ESUMS Environmental Justice Challenge. So when the students go to Google Play or iTunes and they search the Literati app, okay, they're first going to start by creating an account. <coughs> create an account, type in your school information. Please, guys, use your New Haven Gmail accounts. All right, it helps us to track the students easier. Uh, also tell them that when they make their usernames to use a school appropriate name because they can choose trash master you know whatever they want as a cool username that is completely fine with us 
as long as it is school appropriate. I do not have the ability as an admin to go erase people's accounts. So whatever they put, it's gonna be on there for all to see. Okay, so please remind them that it must be school appropriate. They don't need to know that I can't erase it and that I don't have that rights, um, but please, you know, uh, let them know that, okay? Maybe put a little fear into them. Once you've made your account, it's gonna prompt you to either search for a challenge or enter a challenge code, join a challenge. So just like again, going to Google Classroom, this is our code. If you type this code in, it'll bring you straight to ESAM's environmental justice. Maybe when you log in, it'll say, hey, the nearest local challenge for you is the ESAM's environmental justice, All right? When Shauna logged in, she didn't have to go through this because it just automatically prompted her with this one because that's the local one to where she lives and where she was at currently, okay? It should be pretty straightforward. Then the students will actually use their phone. All right, once you're in the app, there's usually a little camera picture at the bottom of the screen. When you find a piece of trash on the ground, all right, you go around outside, take a picture of it. When you take a picture of it, it automatically logs the location of the piece of trash in the app and then gives that student kind of like a point. And all the students will be ranked by the mo whoever picks up the most trash to person who picks up the least trash. All right. Obviously, you got to remind them that when they take the picture of the trash, it only counts if they actually pick it up and throw it away too, right? So take a picture of the trash. It'll log that. And then it ranks them. Uh, the top, uh, what do we say? The top students. All right. We're going to go over this next week more than, but we actually have prizes for them. All right, next week we'll announce uh, how much money they're going to get, so don't tell them that yet. But right now the plan is the top student in 7th and the top student in 8th will get $25 gift cards to, or to we have Amazon, we have a few places that they can, they can choose from. And then the second and third place for each grade level will get $10 to the store of their choice. All right, but please don't tell them necessarily what they're getting yet because we're still hashing that out, but we have been approved pretty much to do that. So just tell them there's going to be cash prizes at the end. For the students who pick up the most trash and document it, okay? <clears throat> now, I have set up in the app, you'll notice when you're in there, a circle around New Haven. It's a 10 mile circle around New Haven, which means that if you want your trash pickup to count, it must be inside that radius. If you live in Naugatuck, I'm sorry, you're more than 10 miles away, this trash pickup is geared towards ESUMS and New Haven. Uh, so, picking up trash in Naugatuck is awesome but that's not what we're focused on. We're focused on a New Haven challenge. So if you want your trash to count, you have to pick up trash within a 10 mile radius of New Haven, which is actually quite big. It's like all the way from Brantford, uh, past Milford, past Orange. Oh, it's, oh, it's like halfway to Bridgeport. So it is quite a large circle. So 90, 95% of our students should easily be included in that. All right. Have the students post their progress on Twitter and Instagram. All right, hashtag all together clean up that's what ted ed wants us to do there is a video right here okay go ahead and click on the video uh, and and watch it it's about the guy who made it uh who made the app he's the designer of the ted ed uh cleanup challenge the one that we're watching all these videos from he put it all together he's the literati designer okay so feel free to watch that movie too to give him a little inspiration of what's going on if you have more questions feel free to contact me but that's it again please guys I want you teachers to do this. Try the app out. Take a picture of something. You know, go out to your just outside your door, find a piece of garbage on the street, take a picture of it, and upload it. See if it works. Okay, guys. Awesome. Have a great day.